I learned to ride a bicycle because the little girl next door to me <clears throat> was old enough to go to school when I wasn't. And she taught me kind of how to ride by holding it up and letting me pedal on her bicycle. But when she went to school one day, I went over and knocked on the door at her house and her mom let me borrow her bicycle. Actually, she told me I could, and then she came back to the door and told me I couldn't. And she said that I couldn't because the tires were flat. And I begged until she let me borrow it anyway. And so, yes, I learned to ride a bicycle by controlling it downhill in someone else's front yard on flat tires until I learned how to balance myself. And then after it had air in the tires, I was able to learn how to pedal it. And that's how I learned how to ride a bicycle. Probably not the right way to learn to ride a bicycle. Obviously not optimal conditions. I'm Jay Lauren Norris for Leading Leaders Podcast. There are times in your life when your passion to do something, your dream that's inside you is like an overwhelming, well, it's like that soft drink with the bubbles in it when you shake it up really hard or you leave it in the car and it starts to get hot and it expands until all of the dents in the bottle are gone and it's begun to take shape differently than what it was before. And when you release that, it's like Mentos in a Diet Coke. It just shoots straight up in the air and it all comes out and Sometimes the dream in you is like that, uncontainable, unstoppable. And sometimes the dream in you is like that same soft drink bottle that's been shaken up way too many times and the pressure's never been released. I used to have a friend who preferred all of his soft drinks flat. So he would buy a two liter and he would shake it until it was hard as a rock. And then he would pop the top on it and let all the CO2 out. And then he would do it again and do it again and do it again until it was nothing but syrup in the bottle. That was his preference. That's how he wanted it. Most of us know, though, if you drop it coming out of the grocery store, you're probably going to take it and put it back on the shelf and grab another one because you don't want it to fizz in all of your car, nor do you want it when it has no fizz left in it because the fizz is the fun. The dream in you is the fizzy fun in you. It's the, the part of you that causes you to expand to life. But if you've allowed the naysayers to cut you off at the pass, the, the bubbles start to fizz to the top and you open it, and then you close it really fast and you keep the dream inside. There's only so many times that you let the fear of failure or the, the fear of looking silly when you do it, the, the fear of other people laughing at your idea, the fear of other people just saying, you're not the right person to do that. You're going to fail at that. I remember when I decided to join, now this is going to sound funny, when I decided to compete in the World Championship of Public Speaking against 35,000 other people. When I made the commitment to do that, I didn't even belong to Toastmasters. When I made the commitment to do that, I honestly didn't even know if Toastmasters had contests aside from the little table topic ribbons that you get if you give a good speech at the table. Because I'd only visited two or three Toastmasters classes at that time and one of a couple of table topic speeches, which honestly I felt like, well, they'd probably give those to all the newcomers just to make you feel good for being there. I wasn't a member of Toastmasters. I'd never been to a Toastmasters class or session or whatever you want to call that. I, I, I didn't know anything about it. But I decided right then, in that moment that I was sharing my vision with strangers, something welled up in me that I want to compete in public speaking at the highest level. What does that look like? I had no idea. But that something bubbling up in me could not be contained at that moment. And over the next four and a half months, I devoted every ounce of extra energy and time that I had to getting into Toastmasters, competing in Toastmasters, finding out what contests would take me to the highest level and focusing my time and my energy on those contests, on that path against those people. And there are some good people in Toastmasters. 
some great leaders and Toastmasters, some good communicators and Toastmasters. Some are CEOs of companies. Some are people who tremble to order at Wendy's. But the decision to join Toastmasters and compete at that level was a dream bubbling up in me since I was a kid. And in the moment that I made the decision to follow that bubbling up dream, it became possible in a whole new way. Sure, people said, you're going to compete at the world level in this, huh? You, little old you, going to compete against 35,000 other people. Really? Okay. Sure, there were failures along the way, and there were things that I learned along the way, and there were still people saying, I'm not sure you can do this along the way. But when I finished in the top 82 out of 35,000, and I came really close to going all the way, I proved to myself that if I have the focus and the energy and the passion and the why behind it, that I can shake that dream up as much as I want and let it out over everybody around me. And I believe the same is true of you. There's a dream in you that you keep capping off, that you let a little of the fizz out and then someone insults it and you close it up. And if you do that too long, the fizz will be gone and the dream will be gone. And if you just keep a lid on it, the dream will never get out. So I'm challenging you today. Take the fizzy dream inside you and shake it up and then pop the top and share it with everybody around you. That dream just might change your future, your destiny, your life, and all the people around you. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.